All right, and up next, let's see how we can use JavaScript in JSX. So in the previous video, we covered CSS. Now let's talk about JavaScript. And before we continue, I want to refactor this to a single book component. And I'm not going to give you the entire speech one more time. Essentially, my preference is to set up a component with all of these elements. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. But yes, you can always split it up into more components. So I want to navigate back. And essentially where I have the book, I'll remove all of them. And basically, I just want to grab the elements one by one. Of course, I'll remove the other ones. So let me take this one out. So this is going to be right after image. And I'm also not going to use this inline setup. Essentially, I'm going to add that code in the CSS. So let me take the heading four. I'll place right after heading two. I'll remove the style. And effectively, I just want to copy these styles and set it up in the index CSS. And in order to speed this up, I'm going to grab this code. As you can see, pretty much the same properties and values. I just don't want to spend time on typing them. So let me navigate back. I'll remove this one and copy and paste. And as far as the index.js, well, I want to remove all of this. So now I have book list with four book components, and then I have a book component. Now the only thing is that I need to remove this semicolon. Now let's talk about JSX. And like we already discussed in the previous video, if we add these curlies in JSX, that means we're going back to the JavaScript land. So essentially, we can use our vanilla JS logic inside of the curlies. Now one big gotcha is that the value must be an expression. So essentially, it needs to return a value. And of course, I'll show you the example. And I'll also show you what happens if we provide a statement. So there's a difference, expression returns a value statement does not. Now let's just start by setting up the variable somewhere here. And I'm going to name this title. And effectively, where we have the heading two with the title, let's pass it in. So notice in here, we go back to the JavaScript. So we set up the curlies. And since we have the variable, we can directly access it. And you'll see what are the benefits. So back in the index JS. Let's go over here. And let's grab this value for the title. So let's cut it out. And I'll set it up over here. I'll say const title. And again, you can set it up inside of the component, or you can set it up outside of the component in the file, or you can set it up in a different file and then import it. We just haven't covered the ES6 modules yet. So let's set it equal to a string. So that doesn't change. And now instead of hard coding here in the heading two, we're going to go here with title. And effectively, whatever changes we apply right away will be displayed in the browser. So it's already somewhat dynamic. Now, of course, we're not getting the data from somewhere else from the external API, for example, and all that stuff. But we're already moving in the right direction. So when you think of dynamic, think of less hard coding. So that's the first. Then let's take a look how we can set up the author as well. So now let me take this value and just to showcase that it's still going to work. I'm going to go here. And let's come up with a value author, copy and paste, and same deal. We go back to JavaScript land, and we simply provide the variable in this case. And then let me show you some instances where this is going to fail, where basically, if we'll set up a statement, it's not going to work. So first, let me go right after the heading four. And we're going to go with paragraph. So if we'll write a statement, and if we'll say, let x is, let's say equal to six, pretty much right away, you'll get an error. And you'll get these squiggly lines. Again, we can only pass here an expression. And essentially, the expression returns a value. Now, this is a side note, but if we want to comment something out, 
in JSX, we need to go with this syntax. And of course, there is a shortcut for that. So in my case, that is command and forward slash. But if you want to see in your operating system, go to edit. And notice it's going to be toggle line comment. So that's how we can comment out. And of course, once I do, notice I don't get the error. And let me showcase one more time with the new expression. So let's say if I have six plus six, this is going to work. Because again, this returns some kind of value. Hopefully that is clear. So every time we want to go back to a JavaScript, we just set up the curlies, and we can start applying our logic. And lastly, let me just showcase that we can do more than just accessing the variables. Of course, when it comes to strings, we have a cool method by the name of two uppercase. So we can simply provide that we can invoke it. And as you can see, we don't get an error. And the author is now in uppercase. Now I'm going to clean up. Basically, I'll just leave these variables over here. And remove these ones. Just keep in mind that if you ever need a reference, you do have a readme. So let me remove this. Also this one as well. I also want to clean up this gibberish. And up next, let's talk about props in react.